invite you to follow along using either the worship bulletin that you printed for yourself at home or following the text as it is made available on your screen. But join with me as we take our first steps on Good Friday. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the name of the arm of the name been revealed. For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. On this day, we remember events from long ago that have become for the world a portal through which the broken heart of God is perceived. These events and the worldly realities that would make events like this ever possible also break our hearts. Our heartbreak also becomes a portal through which we perceive God's broken heart. Our heartbreak is also God's heart breaking. On Good Friday, especially on this particular Good Friday when COVID-19 is ravaging our world, we won't miss this manifestation of God in us. In our grief, God's so near that it takes our breath away.
Many rites of religion encourage us to see the good in the world and the good in people. Good Friday asks us to discern the powerful self-interest in our world that crushes people like Jesus and vetoes the greater good he was willing to die for. The actual historic events that we recall tonight were designed by those who carried them out to send a message. No one could have imagined that the message received would have been from the God of this cruelly, disdainfully crucified servant of the good. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. Like your defeat, they could not 
this is the story of what happened on Good Friday. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples often entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing that all that there was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. So the soldiers, their officer and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. After Pilate questioned him extensively, he went out to the accusers and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release you for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, hail king of the Jews and striking him on the face. When the religious officials and the police saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. They crucified him there and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them.
Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified. And in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Let us pray. O oh God, whose broken heart we perceive in this tomb, in the strength of your compassionate love, give us the courage to acknowledge both our inner pains and the pains of your world and to surround them all with the transforming power of your love. For the sake of your Son. Amen.